Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Time for a Telecom Rehab webinar. I'm Judy Arnold, a product marketer with Cinch, and I'll get our webinar started by outlining the agenda, introducing our speakers, and kicking off the conversation. We do not have plans to pepper you with PowerPoint, but we wanna have you here directly from our client, Chris Patterson, so you can hear his story and learn from his experience. Our focus today is on overcoming communication challenges stemming from a dramatic growth and acquisition strategy. That presents a unique challenge in healthcare and for any industries concerned about privacy and security. We're gonna start with introductions, and after that, a few brief notes about key industry trends, and then we will hear the Florida Orthopedic Institute story. We want you to walk away with four key learnings, how to cost effectively scale and do it securely as well, how to increase quality, improve efficiency, and enhance employee and customer experience. And as I mentioned, we will then wrap up with a question and answer period. To introduce our panel, Chris Patterson is responsible for the technical operations of Florida Orthopedic Institute, its managed practices and surgery centers, and is also the HIPAA security officer. Ricardo Ordonez is the real-time communications practice manager for Synoptech, a global systems integrator and managed IT services provider. Miles Feinberg, leads business development and growth in the Southeast region for Synoptech. And Kent Caldwell is a voice solutions architect working with partners and enterprise clients with Cinch, offering personalized cloud communications across voice, messaging, video, and email. Let's take a moment and look at the current state of the world. Not surprisingly, the lines between voice calls and meetings mobile and Wi-Fi networks, mobile and desktop devices, and office and field settings are gonna to continue to blur. And I think that Microsoft puts it really well by coining it the promise of organizational mobility. So how are organizations dealing with this challenge of organizational mobility and communicating with employees and customers across all these different environments? Well, Microsoft Teams has emerged as the market's best collaboration tool and one of the fastest growing apps. During the pandemic, it increased 894% in growth. That translates into about a million companies in North America using Office 365 and half of their users using Teams. On a monthly basis, that's over 270 million monthly active Teams users. And as many of us have experienced, that also translated into a lot more weekly meetings over audio and video 252% increase in weekly meetings for most Teams users. And in addition to audio and voice, chat also um, boomed with a 32% increase in weekly chats by average team users. So that leads us to the story of Florida Orthopedic who incorporated Teams as one of their solutions. Uh, Chris, good to have you. Um, you. Can you get us started by telling us a bit about Florida Orthopedic the organization, what you do, um, the geographic region, and your growth strategy. You bet, Judy. Uh, thank you again. Uh, Florida Orthopedic really started small. Uh, we started here in the Tampa Bay about 30 years ago uh, with a small private practice. Um, through natural growth, um, you know, they grew to be one of the dominant players here in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, their goals uh, haven't changed and they want to continue to grow. Uh, and they've adopted a, uh, a M&A strategy, uh, mergers and acquisitions to continue that growth paradigm uh, as we look to the next few years. So that really kicked off about two years ago, uh, really in line with COVID, unfortunately, um, when we started uh, merging with other practices and acquiring other practices. And uh, through that, we saw a huge amount of growth that brought in a new slew of problems that, uh, that we really weren't prepare, prepared for. One of them being this communications problem that we're here to talk about today. Right, one of the things you and I've talked about is the fact that the disparate systems with all of these acquisitions was a challenge. Talk a little bit about that impact. 
Yeah, so as you can imagine, you know, a hundred doctors uh, getting them on one system is definitely difficult. But uh, as you start bringing in another hundred doctors uh, on five different systems, um, those those really expound uh, for the problems. And uh, what we had was a on-premise phone system uh, that had a significant amount of limitations when it came to mobile calling and things along that nature. Uh, once we started having that work from home strategy that COVID brought everyone, uh, we really started seeing where uh, our phone system was really starting to burst at the seams. Uh, putting a handset out for every user is a significant investment. Um, and then tying a VPN back into your corporate network presents a slew of security challenges. Uh, so we started looking at solutions that could solve our challenges, but we also wanted to be able to take these other organizations that had maybe a UCAS phone system, maybe an on-prem phone system, whatever they had, and bring them into ours because the doctors will collaborate between the teams, uh, will need to transfer patients on scheduling, things along those natures. So we really needed a cohesive strategy uh, throughout the organization. And uh, that's where we kind of picked up the team's atmosphere uh, as being, you know, that collaborative opportunity for us. What did you try initially um, that, that worked well or, or didn't work well? Well, initially, uh, you know, we looked at a number of different options. Uh, Kent Caldwell here from Cinch uh, helped us out in installing uh, a small UCAS system to pilot in one of our uh, environments. Um, it works really well for them while they were uh, struggling through some phone challenges and we were still adopting our strategy, um, you know, but we could see that it wasn't going to scale to the size that we needed it to and it wasn't going to have quite all the tie-ins that we were looking for, especially in the customability range. So, uh, so we went back to him and said, you know, what, what other options do you have? And, and, you know, he introduced us a little bit to the team's environment and uh, what he was doing on a couple of different projects uh, with some larger organizations than us that, that maybe had, you know, full staffed IT and things. And uh, at that point, um, you know, the, the technology was newer, uh, but, um, but we really didn't have that tie-in that we were looking for. Uh, mm -hmm. So we went with a partner, um, a different partner that we could bring in to provide us more of a, you know, that, that smaller level of service. Uh, but that brought in its own challenges. Uh, and, you know, what we really wanted was that, you know, perfect phone underlaying network uh, that Kent had with Cinch. And we wanted to overlay that with all the features of Microsoft Teams. Thank you, Kent. Um... Can you expand on that a little bit? I know when um, Chris came to you, you know what what your thoughts were about how you could help, and what what other recommendations did you? Yeah, sure. Have? You know, Chris Chris was the you know like most directors of IT in the healthcare space. He was running extremely hot. He was in the middle of more than what he was just talking about. He was also converting a, an MPLS network to SD WAN. He was uh, looking at ramping up and, and improving his security measures. And also with all this M&A, when the disparaging systems, he also had a contact center that he needed to upgrade as well. So he had quite a bit on his plate. Um, we were looking initially just to provide him the SIP trunks that he spoke about with his existing you know, IP prem based uh, PBXs. So we could kind of check off the boxes. He needed a tier one provider. That was the preference. He wanted somebody that was HIP compliant and they could provide the diversity and the availability that he required from the business. So we, we set up some trunks and we kind of checked all those boxes and it went really, really well. And then he kind of shared his, you know, his end state, you know, he wanted to go to a hosted uh, voice solution. And that's when he, he went he went with the first provider. Um, it kind of had a little bit of issues. He shared those issues with me. Um, and then I had worked previously with Miles and Ricardo and Sonat Tech on a couple of other opportunities that fell, you know, kind of dovetailed exactly what, what Chris was trying to do. And so that's where I kind of made those those introductions to him. I said, hey, we can we've got the highway where that checks all your boxes. We're a certified direct routing operator connect, dynamic E911, you know, Microsoft partner but we couldn't provide the pre and post sale support that Chris and the best practices that Chris really needed. And I knew Snop Tech could, and that's how kind of our a genesis of our conversation went and then the introduction the introduction to Snop Tech. 
So, so Chris, so where did you go from there? You know, what were your next steps to deal with all of these issues of the systems and scalability and control and um, other communications challenges? Yeah, so just stepping back just a little bit to what Kent alluded yeah. to there, you know, are those challenges that we ran into. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with our partner that we brought in, uh, while they could provide that connection to the Microsoft Teams environment, what we found was they required us to host all of our office licensing with them in order for them to manage their relationship with Microsoft. That became a big problem because we're we're a larger organization. They were used to working with smaller organizations, and uh, you know we had an EA agreement with Microsoft that uh, one we couldn't break, but two, if we did, it would cost us significantly more to mm -hmm. to work out of that scenario. So uh, so what we ended up with was this process where we had to take a ticket to our vendor. They would troubleshoot it, say, nope, this is a Microsoft problem. Take it to Microsoft. And they would say, you know, hey, we need more information about this call. Talk to your vendor. And, you know, two, three days would go by as we shuffled back and forth because there was not that back end link that we needed between those two systems. Uh, so that was, you know, the the biggest thing but there was also other things there was you know the lack of functionality that we would need in areas like call recording and areas like uh analytics and um breaking out teams plus we just needed a lot of help in customizing the system and uh so you know when kent brought up synoptech and uh some of the the great work that they had done uh, we said you know let's let's move from this other vendor let's try synoptech and and see what options they have uh, and even just in the pre-sales process they were able to help us with, out with so much of our deployment problems uh, you know and it's just gone so well since then that's great and, and miles so talk a little bit about how when chris reached out you know what were some of the things that you did to step in and, and help him fill those gaps sure thanks judy uh and you know as chris mentioned here um it's really about understanding their needs it's an optic. We don't believe there's a one size fits all for anyone. Every organization has unique needs. You heard Chris talk about um, wanting to keep the licensing, the Microsoft licensing as it was, but still have complete advice, support on licensing, you know, end to end support, um, understanding that there's other vendors who make those requirements and purchase license from them or transition, but we don't require that. Obviously, uh, the cinch the quality of the network uh, was really important. Chris was already familiar. We had a relationship with Cinch already, running over Cinch. Uh, obviously delivered that. Uh, important to have full integration with 5.9 as a contact center, which we did seamlessly cost effectively. And speaking of costs, um, you know, the usage model is that most users across, you know, Florida orthopedic uh, are not necessarily using really telephony all that much, which is which is common these days. You have some heavy users mm -hmm. in different departments. So they wanted a cost model that really made sense rather than a, you know, a fixed price per user for every user, right. which we accommodated that. Uh, the speedy support with staff that have expert teams, uh, expertise on teams and team telephony. And, you know, we're a global managed service provider with an emphasis on service. Uh, so we really excelled in delivering that white glove managed teams experience and, and just lastly you know uh, chris mentioned some of these things like uh the ability to have uh call recording but with hipaa compliance you know being that set up to operate inside their own tenant with their own safeguards around that uh um, having a dashboard of analytics to really drill down to visually see what's going on and to see what's going on in the entire system is really important so these are just you know some of the many things that we we provided that's great. And you talk about Teams, so I wanted to step back for one minute and go to Ricardo. Um, Microsoft Teams does have a phone system, but what does it provide? You know, what features does it provide? What's missing? Help help everyone understand a little bit about that. Sure. I mean, it's a complete phone system. Um, it excels in areas where remote collaboration, so remote workforce, that's because Teams uses a different protocol than a traditional SIP. UCAS provider, it uses TLS, it outperforms SIP, um, especially when the network's not uh, controlled. Um, from a feature functionality standpoint, it's very, very robust. You know, you can do um, you can do hold, call park, transfer, consultant transfer. You can do conference calls with 250 uh, participants at a time. 
Um, you can record calls, you can transcribe calls, you can live caption calls. Um, and, you know, it's going to be a very, very robust and sophisticated and elegant tool, but it does have still some deficiencies. The, the key one being reporting. The problem with the reporting in Teams is there's really three problems with it. Number one, um, it, it's you have to access the Teams admin center for reporting. So you're not going to necessarily want to give a user in the environment access to the admin center. You might reserve that for IT staff. And so if you have a sales manager that wants to report, he's going to have to leverage the IT department to pull that report for him because he needs access to the Teams admin center and he won't have it, for example, he or she. The second problem is it only does ad hoc reporting. So if you want to schedule a report, hey, I want to know the phone activity for the prior week every Monday, that IT person is going to have to go in and manually run the report for that manager because it won't, it, won't autom it won't automate it. And then the third thing that's a problem with it is Microsoft's controlling with which metrics it deems are significant. And so you have this narrow scope of metrics that you can see. Um, and they, they all have to do with productivity, like you know how many conference calls did they schedule, how many red hawk, how many were repeating, et cetera, how many one-on-one -on -one calls, video calls. And so Microsoft's solution to this problem is Power BI. Go get a Power BI license, go build Power BI results uh, reports. Power BI will integrate natively with the Teams Admin Center. But that's that's an arduous, it's not easy for everybody. Um, and so we, we, we have our own enhanced reporting tool that basically solves for all those problems. It, you don't have to access the Teams Admin Center. It's a different portal. You can schedule reports. Um, you can schedule them to be go at any cadence you want, you know, with multiple distribution types and formats. And then uh, the third thing is it goes from maybe 20 or 30 metrics. It goes to hundreds of metrics. And so that's the enhanced reporting and the analytics that Chris and Miles were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, Teams has very, very sophisticated call routing capabilities. So like, thank you for calling for sales press one, how you route and distribute calls. It does that very, very well. It's quasi contact center ish, but the reporting is deficient there as well. So depending on your reporting needs, you'll, you'll, you'll have problems with that. So we do have a bridge that has real time queue analytics. So you can see how many callers are in the queue, how many agents are available. Um, and then the third thing is call recording. You can record calls ad hoc on Teams, but this tool allows you to have like an always on. So you can say these users in the environment are always being recorded. You can have a message that appears, you know, that tells the caller they're being recorded. You can establish your own retention policy. How long do you, know, do you want to have a 30 day rolling, 60 day rolling? You can exclude uh, from the call logs, from the retention policy. You can actively listen on the call. You can tag notes on the call. Um, and then there's SMS. We have our own SMS product. So SMS is usually one that also people want and need, and you can't necessarily get a great solution uh, with Teams. And so we, so those, those are probably the two big things, reporting and then texting. And what are the licensing re requirements with the Teams phone? So you can always make a call Teams to Teams anywhere globally for free. The, what you, the licensing that you need to enable a dial pad to dial somebody, say, office line, landline, mobile number, it's called uh, Microsoft 365 phone system. It's an add-on license. It's generally $8 unless you're a nonprofit or you're in education, then they have very, very, very competitive pricing. It's almost, it's not free, but it's close to free. Um, and so you need that license that enables the dial pad. Uh, the only caveat to that is if you're already on an E5, then that E5 bundle includes phone system. So if you have an E5 license, you're already paying for the phone system. If you're not using Teams as your phone system, you're paying for that feature functionality twice, once to Microsoft and then once to whatever your provider is. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing is if you are an organization that wants E5, but you find it expensive and it's very, very attractive because of the security aspects to it, by repositioning your IT budget in telephony back into Microsoft Teams, Microsoft ecosystem, you whittle the gap to go from E3 to E5. Now, instead of being a $20 per user Delta, maybe it's now six or seven. So mm -hmm. there's some there's some, all, there's some benefits with maybe reallocating spend um, kind of a little smarter in the tenant. That's great. And um, when it comes to the direct routing, another thing I wanted to touch on is, you know, the security concerns, and we're gonna get back to that with you, Chris, in a minute, but Kent, um, I know that emergency calling is important to consider when your calls are routing through Teams. So can you talk about that service and how you're supporting Florida Orthopedic? Yeah, sure. I mean, like I stated earlier, we're, we're a certified dynamic E911 partner with Microsoft Teams. 
I am actually, I live in Tampa and I've been a patient of Florida orthopedic. I'm old, I've had shoulders, elbows, had plenty of surgeries. So when I'm actually meeting my doctor, there's, there's, a, there's quite a few offices here in town. I might be meeting him in, in one side of town versus the other. The nice thing about that E911, it follows that doctor or the staff from one office to the next via their, via their, their PC. So that was definitely a box that uh, Chris wanted to tick off and we were able to provide. That's great. Chris, um, so we talked about a lot of the benefits of these solutions. Um, why did uh, Teams and direct routing make sense for you? Why was that a good solution? Any other reasons yeah, it, to add? They've hit so many of them, but uh, yeah. you know, the fact that we had Microsoft licensing and, and you know, Microsoft is really posed to be poised to be you know a great player in the space because. Uh, you're going to use them for office most likely as a as a company and you know once you use them for office then you're going to use them for email and once you use them for email then you know start looking at their security products because their protection uh malware protection everything like that uh is first class and then on top of that their data loss protection and all those policies and things like that come on top of it all of a sudden you find yourself in an e5 license right and and really for the value that it is, uh, it's already a cost savings over what you're doing today. So once you're in that environment, now that phone system, like Ricardo said, is just an extra cost that you're paying somebody else duplicative. So for us, that brought down the expense of transitioning to a new phone system by 50% because we didn't have to duplicate that cost anymore. And uh, many of the, the replacement systems that we looked at that had kind of this full communication telephony platform, uh, you know, were twice as expensive as our transition to Teams. Wow. Uh, and, and that made a huge difference for us. On top of that, like Kent alluded to, we had to have, you know, that 911 follow our doctors. They, they see multiple clinics, they're in surgery at multiple places, they may call patients from home, all these different things, but they, we've got to know, where they're at and if they do need to call 911 uh then uh we need that call to go to the right spot for them so uh so that was a big process for us for that but uh but i think the most important thing for us was adoption how do you get somebody to a new phone system effectively how do you get them there with the least amount of pain because it's always going to be tough to make a change like this um, and how do you get your shareholders, which for us as physicians, to buy into making this change? And for that, you have to show them some value, right? It can't just be, it can't just be, this is better for you because of money, although that's a great decision. It's got to be something else. And so what we were able to, to give the physicians was now their cell phone becomes a, an extension of Teams. And they can call a patient from their cell phone that phone number is automatically masked to our main number. No longer do they have patients texting them back because they accidentally called them from their cell phone and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, and you know, if a patient texts them and all of a sudden they get into exchange, now their phone gets lost and we've got a HIPAA problem. You know, there's so many different avenues there that, that things can go wrong. So we wanted to show them, let's keep you in this environment. Let's give you direct contact to your secretary at any time. You can just transfer the call to them and things like that, no matter where your secretary's at today, you know, and things along that nature. We wanted to be able to route voicemails to a team group rather than, you know, that individual person that we had to before. And uh, Synoptic was able to help us in designing an overall strategy to make it to where uh, the the message comes into a route point and if nobody answers it then it goes to a group share point uh, from there you can do so many things you know you can automate so much and uh, that was really a benefit that we could show the providers and and you know all of our executives so you know once we once we started showing that people got really excited and and because we went with that direct routing option, we had so many different ways that we could pull it all together pain-free. Uh, you know, with direct routing, they have an SBC that sits out there and we tied that into our existing phone system. We were able to move all of our phone lines over and nobody even noticed that we did anything. And uh, so now we're still operating on our own old phone system, but we're operating under the Synoptec phone lines provided through Cinch. Immediately, all of our you know, dropped calls, things like that went away. And, you know, people were like, oh, we've already upgraded our phone system. But, you know, that was just phase one. We started bringing in, you know, all this different technology and stuff on top of that and just keep providing value over and over again. And that gets people excited. So, mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, from there, we brought in our call center, uh, five nines. Synoptic, again, with that SBC, can now route a call over to that call center, route a call over to Teams, or route a call over to our legacy phone system uh, for users that hadn't transitioned yet. And uh, that made the whole thing very seamless to the end user. They didn't have to go learn everything day one. They could mm -hmm. learn it all in piecemeal. And because they were already using Teams for uh, all their meeting calls during COVID, they were already using Teams to chat back and forth with each other. They felt very comfortable in the environment and the transition didn't feel like you're getting a new product. It felt like you're getting an upgrade to an existing product. That's great. And you, you alluded to um, a lot of customization and Miles, I wanted to, to uh, go to you for a minute to just talk about um, how critical it was for Florida Orthopedic to be able to customize to make this a successful transition. Are there other customizations that they might not yet have implemented um, that listeners might think about as they begin their journey, other suggestions or other future thoughts? Yeah, um, Judy, it's interesting. I rarely find an organization that wants to adopt Team Telephony that doesn't have some customization requirements. So Chris, right. while there was a number of different solutions that they use, that's that's not uncommon. And, you know, yeah. some examples of that, um, like an IVR system, you know, where you have press one for this, press two for that, that needs to be integrated with telephony, obviously. Mm -hmm. Some of the organizations we deal with have uh, need overhead paging, like they have a warehouse, you know, and they want to make a, a broadcast announcement. You know, Ricardo oh, mentioned right. SMS. A lot, a lot of organizations, actually in healthcare, often have like an e-fax. They still use fax and you know, mm -hmm. e-fax integration. Um, some organizations want their existing legacy phone system at least temporarily to coexist. I mean, you know, maybe there's some phasing in and a transition period we've solved for that. You know, Chris, uh, at Florida Ortho, you know, they have a contact center integration, but a lot of organizations have other applications, you know, in different realms, like, like CRM solutions, like Salesforce or Dynamics, and they want to maybe initiate calls while someone's in the CRM or maybe, and maybe ingest the call recordings or transcripts back into the customer record. And there could be many other, you know, applications, obviously, you might want to integrate with. For that reason, you know, while we've built out these most common integrations and we're regularly uncovering new ones periodically, right? That that is a need that we haven't encountered before. So for that reason, we have a we have a dev team that's experienced uh, in building out new ones. But we have a pretty good strong stockpile of intellectual property because it's just so often that you need these customizations. Thanks, Miles. And um, Chris, one of the things I wanted to talk about is um, the results you're seeing. So you did talk about the savings, which is fantastic. Um, so what other results can you share about being cost effective, scalability, even quality, customer feedback, um, those kinds of things? Yeah, I mean, first off from the top, I mean, I'm a director. So the first thing I think of is, you know, how can I reduce the burden on my employees? You know, management's got to be easy on this thing. Having a partner with Synoptech lets us push a lot of that off to them that that we were handling on our own since we had an on-prem phone system or, you know, paying through the nose to, the, to get a vendor out to work on and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that part became... Uh, so much simpler with teams, you know, not troubleshooting with a carrier is another huge one, you know, and between those two alone, we were able to reduce half an FTE uh, and reassign that to new, you know, kind of burgeoning projects and things like that. That became even more important as we got into M&A because we had mm -hmm. a full FTE devoted to uh, phone system maintenance and and running things uh, that we didn't have to do uh, because now everything became inclusive in uh, working in the team. So for you know my department that made the most sense. For all the others, you know bringing those secretaries, uh, those voicemails in a collaborative effort. Uh, you know in a typical doctor's office, that one secretary has to handle basically everything from a doctor, but they've got mm -hmm. medical assistance and things like that. But you know, when you've got one voicemail to check, that goes to that one person and she's got to get to it or he's got to get to it. And you know, it, it makes for a bottleneck. But now mm -hmm. that we can collaborate and share it and the uh, supervisors can see exactly how underwater those secretaries are, can monitor it with the analytics, can listen in to call recordings and, and hear the frustrations if need be and things like that. All those things make it uh, a much more efficient uh, for the practice 
uh, which makes a huge ordeal. And then lastly, I mean, there's so many of them, I, I don't want to touch them all, but but lastly, the physician side, right? And yeah. physicians need to communicate with patients. Uh, you know, they're going to, they, they need to call that patient and give them the results in person at times. They need to, you know, listen to the feedback from the patient uh, outside of the office. And when they can call that patient and mask that phone, have that secure method of communication with them uh, and be able to tie in things on top of it, that's that's where the real, uh, the real value comes to them. You know, they can, in the same app, message their secretary while they're talking with a patient, get details, and now, you know, they can act like they remember everything about that patient's visit because they got somebody on the back end working with them. You know, and keeping that all inclusive into one system really makes a huge difference for them. And so they were, um, no problems hopping on board um, in doing that? They. Oh, there was apprehension. Don't get me wrong, okay. but uh, as soon as we got one or two moved over, then it was like you know they started talking to each other. They started saying, you know, you know, listen, all my woes are resolved. I, you know, I no longer drop calls. You know, I, I no uh -huh. longer lose a call because my secretary doesn't know what happened to it or something along those lines. You know, and once you get a few of those win cases, then the rest yeah. of them really want to get on board quick. And we had doctors coming to us, which you know for us usually it's pulling teeth, but we had doctors yeah. coming to us. To, to actually make the transition. And that was uh, just a huge success story in and of itself. That's wonderful. And that, that touches on, again, the issue that we've talked about, security and patient care. Um, I know, Kent, um, you and Chris have talked about some other things when it comes to HIPAA compliance going forward for the future. What other challenges are there that you might be working on to solve? Yeah, we're kind of piggybacking on what Chris just stated. Um, you know, since we're a full-blown CPAS provider, right? So we can provide voice, messaging, faxing, and email. So Chris and his team, they're looking for a way to communicate down to those patients like myself. They want to be able to send out and, and gain secure uh, surgical authorizations. So obviously the phone call that's kind of been hit and miss with the, the success rate there. So we're now looking, we can provide a HIPAA PHI compliant email solution that they can send out to these patients and gain that that surgical authorization that they're looking for and also be able to communicate down to them, you know, hey, you know, yeah, surgery tomorrow, remember not to eat for 24 hours and, and, and different, you know, communications like that. But so that's some of the other things that we're, we're working with him that, again, check that HIPAA and the PHI compliancy that they, they desperately need. That's yeah, really all you can do as, you know, as a, a practice, all you can do is find those partners that really make you successful, right? We can't do it all our own. Uh, we're not going to have the staff to design a phone system. We're not going to have the staff to work with, you know, an underlying network carrier. Uh, you know, being able to rely on one of the the top tier of um, phone connectivity with Cinch and uh, underlying that, you know, that perfect road to lay down your framework on, and then partnering with Microsoft to provide a UI, which is the you know the skills that they have, uh, you know, gives you those two mammoths that uh, make a great product. And then you've got to have that glue in between, right? You got to have Synoptic there to manage that relationship on both sides. You got to have them there because they know everything about your environment, and they can jump on a call. Uh, and they've got the developers and things ready to make those customizations. And that's what that's what makes this whole thing a win is by taking you know those two behemoths and putting that glue in the middle to make it all work together. Well, Chris, I know this this didn't all happen overnight, and there was trial and error. When you when you look back with what you know now, would you have done things any differently? Yeah, you know, I, I, there's always things that you're going to change, but uh, but as far as you know, once we got onto the Synoptech and Cinch bandwagon here, uh, things went so smoothly that there was nothing I would change. Now, I, I I wouldn't try to do it myself if I did it again because that was my first try. Um, you know, I wouldn't work with that small partner who you know has you know one or two options and a cookie cutter method. Uh, because you know that's a failure for us as well, and mm -hmm. and you know instead you've got to find that partner that can can give you that cut level of customization that you need. Maybe you're just you know a straight operator connect uh, user. Maybe you want somebody to manage all your licenses, and mm -hmm. maybe you want somebody who can customize every facet of the operation. And you know once we found that partner here with Synoptech and Cinch, that that really made it uh, that we could choose any of those that made sense for us. So. 
you know, it's really helpful to hear that that story, and I'm glad it's it's working for you. You know, we talked about um, you know saving money with the existing licenses, um, scaling cost effectively. Um, you know, the success and security and reliability with the Cinch network, as well as being able to lean on Synoptech for the customizations and the su implementation and support. Um, and, you know, really importantly, getting the providers and employees on board, reducing that risk with your messaging um, and having the secure communications. Is there anything else you can think of as kind of a, um, a lesson learned for out of the story, something we didn't touch on that you might want to might want to add for those those listening before we uh, move on to some Q&A. Yeah, I mean, you just don't know what you don't know when you come into these things. And uh, what we saw right off the bat with Synoptic was they sat down and, and looked at our overall strategy uh, and developed a roadmap for us to say, you know, these are all the features that you could do. Uh, do you need this? And we were like, oh, call recording. We never even thought about that portion of it. You know, mm -hmm. and and those are the things that you miss when you try to do these things by yourself. So uh, while all those options are available, uh, you know, finding that partner uh, is the way to go. But uh, but yeah, I mean, the feature sets uh, alone are are just impossible to know all of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so get that partner that can can sort through that whole mess with you and then challenge them on customizations challenge them instead of what uh, the system is designed to do to what you want to do because uh, oftentimes they have the development skills and things like that on the back end to really make it work and and sometimes you know incredibly cost effectively that then you can get those ROI results that you need uh, and and get a better user adoption because they're excited about the product shift thanks um, if anybody else wants to add anything, feel free. If not, I'm going to ask Bill, who's our teammate behind the scenes, fielding questions from the from the audience. Uh, if we've got any any questions, uh, did you have any downtime at all going from a prior solution to this one? Well, because we had that direct routing. Uh, option and we put that SBC in the back, we were able to have zero downtime. So uh, porting the numbers, which is always the hardest part of this whole process, and that's the time that you're going to have that downtime is you're working with a carrier who doesn't want to lose you and you know they don't they don't have any incentive to help you during this process. So uh, for us it took multiple efforts to get all of our numbers back from those carriers that we were moving away from. But since we had that direct routing option, we were able to take our time, get that right, get all those numbers in the system and still point them back to our old phone system, eliminating all those downtimes that we could have had on that environment. Uh, once we got everything in place, uh, the actual move over is very simple. I mean, to, to move an employee, most of the time is as simple as going into my old phone system, typing the new phone number for that employee and hitting, you know, forward all calls here. Uh, once they felt comfortable, then it was, you know, just remove them out of the old phone system. So really for us, there was there was no downtime. Uh, we had significant downtime when we had our first attempt with our previous vendor, uh, many kind of trial and errors and, uh, you know, troubleshooting processes where maybe not the whole phone system would be down, but, you know, 20 users would be down because of some unknown issue that uh, we were running into. And uh, one other question that came in, and as a reminder to anyone in, in the audience, you can always put your questions in the questions box uh, from the GoToWebinar control panel. But uh, Kent, can you talk about, are there different options for voice enabling teams? We talked a lot about uh, direct routing, but are there other options? Yeah, there's obviously direct routing, which was the you know, the, the Teams' first foray, and then now they've rolled out Operator Connect as well, where, um, you know, we, again, are a certified Operator Connect partner. So there's there's two flavors. Um, obviously, the Operator Connect piece is, ties in directly to the Microsoft tenants, and it kind of operates as a, uh, as a PBX in the cloud for them. Fantastic. And and just to round it out with Miles here, uh, what else are you seeing in the markets? Uh, it's similar issues in other industries. We talked a lot about healthcare here, which is important. You mentioned they use facts, which other industries use as well. But what kind of other verticals or industries are you seeing a real rise in moving over to Teams? I mean, it really spans a lot of things. I mean, we work with a number of uh, banking organizations. When I mentioned uh, IVR before, you know, they use that for people to do you know touch tone uh, banking. Um, 
and then more broadly, though, you know, Chris said perfectly, you don't know what you don't know. Um, this is really fits into a CIO, a director IT's vision and roadmap for application modernization and the overall experience. And so even if you're like, you know, Chris has talked about like, hey, we wouldn't want to do this ourselves. We don't, you know, it doesn't make sense. But some larger organizations may decide, but you still, if you're if you're not an organization who has experience in what what is possible here, let's kind of more broadly just with team telephony, but across the board, then you want to really talk to an organization that does know about the art of the possible, you know, it's a super app. And what can we integrate? You know, chatbots, automated survey, sentiment analysis. I mean, really the sky's the limit. And then kind of having those discussions will really help set a strategy going forward. Thanks, Miles. I think that's all the questions that we have. I want to uh, thank all of you for your time, Chris especially. We really appreciate all the time you've given us. Um, we appreciate your partnership. Um, and I hope that this has been helpful for others with the same kind of situation. We will be sharing the recorded webinar with those that have registered and attended. Um, and we'll also have it on our website. So we, we appreciate it. If people have additional questions, you can go to our websites and reach out. We are happy to, to field those questions and help if you have any of these similar challenges. So, uh, you know, see if it's time for your own telecom rehab. And if so, reach out um, and we're happy to help. Thank you all for your time and thanks to everybody who attended. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.